Hello you guys and welcome to my channel. I'm so excited to have you here. So today we are going to be doing a video about the MLM Savvy and in particular we are going to be listening to a 14 minute call from an individual that's in Savvy but I want to do a little bit of background about this individual before we actually dive into the call and what the call is about because I feel like this background information is going to be really important. So first off the person that I'm talking about today has actually been in network marketing for over 25 years. He and his spouse are in network marketing so they really build their team together and they normally do all of their training calls together. So it's normally him and her and they're on training calls, but this specific call is only with him in it. So we're only going to be seeing him in this call. And this call is titled how you can get paid more with savvy. So he is really trying to recruit people into the MLM by talking about the money aspect of it. And I really feel like this is important to talk about. So first off, when I was doing a little bit of research into this individual and his wife, I really wanted to just look on the internet and see what I could find out about them and everything like that. So I actually found a article that I want to read or kind of like a post that was made by this individual and his wife a couple years back. Now, I don't know what year this was written. It won't tell me. It does say that this website, like down at the bottom, it does say 2018. So I'm not sure if that means it, this post was made in 2018 or if it was sooner, if it was later, because like I said, this person has been in network marketing for 25 years. So we're actually going to call them K and T. So K is the wife and then T is the husband. So it says, something happened in 2003 that changed our lives forever. My wife K and I have been in a home-based business industry for over 15 years, aka MLMs. Many of those years were incredibly profitable with up to six and seven figure incomes. We were living the lifestyle in our early 30s. We had four beautiful little girls, a big house in San Diego, luxury vehicles, and we traveled like rock stars. It was awesome for us, but unfortunately not for our bank accounts. The more money we made, the more we spent. Kay and I were living way above our means and we quickly learned the success doesn't last forever. As the result of some bad business decisions, our income was disappearing like quicksand. This eventually led us to what we remember as the crash of 2003. That, of course, was the year we went broke. Six days before Christmas, we heard a loud crash in our driveway. My heart sank into my chest without knowing what it was. I remember the following moments in slow motion. I felt a tug at my shirt. It was my oldest daughter, who was only four years old at the time. I looked into her eyes and she asked daddy, where are they taking our car? That day, both of our cars were repossessed. Not only were our children anxiously anticipating presents from Santa that we didn't have any money for, we had no car and we were inches away from losing everything. We had come to grips with the truth, some serious changes needed to take place. Realizing this, my wife spoke the words I never thought she would say, T, you need to get a real job. And by the way, I'm reading this because it is extremely important to the actual 14 minute call we're about to watch. So that's that's why I'm reading all of this to you guys because it's really important and a good backstory to what's about to happen in this call. Wow, that hurt. I had never had a real job. From the time I was a teenager, finding ways to make money was easy. Mowing lawns, waiting tables, starting a recycling company in college, etc. That was it. I didn't know how to fill out a resume to save my life. I didn't even know how to spell resume. At this point, there was one thing running through my brain. Dear God, I have to feed my family. What am I going to do? I had to do something, anything, anywhere. Over the next year, I ended up in Temecula, California, selling landscape door to door. Ever heard of Temecula, California? During the summer, it never cools off. I was working 10 hour days in 120 degree heat. One of the most humbling moments of my life happened during this period when I knocked on the door of a guy who was making six figures in my last company. I had personally recruited him. He opened the door, scrunched up his face and said, T, what in the world are you doing? You're on my doorstep with an aeration T, I think that's how you say that word, an aeration t-shirt on. Is this a joke? Embarrassed, I started making excuses saying, well, I'm just trying this thing out part-time. Obviously, that wasn't true. I was totally broke and desperate to make ends meet. I had given up on the home-based business industry, MLMs, and here was the guy completely thriving off of it. How did I go from making millions in the home-based business industry to being completely completely burned out, tired, desperate, afraid, broke, and worst of all, door knocking. 
It wasn't the industry that stopped working for me. I stopped working for it. For 10 years, I had been trained incorrectly on how to succeed. And this is going to be very important. Let's see why he felt he was trained incorrectly. It says the result, it was sucking my life away. I had no life away from my business. I had been trained to believe that in order to make it big, I needed to work seven days a week, recruit, 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 do all the training, all the conference calls, setting up the advertising, taking every call and every email from new recruits any time of the day or night, and my family, my health, and my hobbies were my second priority. Only after I became financially independent could I work less and enjoy life. Basically, I was running five or six companies. I was the focus of everything. I had made the business and everyone's success depend on me. I used to sit up at three and four in the morning, stressed out, thinking about the new people who got into my business that week. I felt like I was responsible for their success. I got caught in this trap as a leader. I thought the definition of a leader was to do everything. If you are a leader, you probably know what I'm talking about. If you are new to this industry, I want to show you some things to avoid so you can enjoy life and be unusually successful without feeling like you have to sell your life to the business. In 2004, I was exposed to the truth. And what is that truth? What is it? He said, I learned that it was possible to have life and make money. I learned that it was possible to build a widely successful business with a system that wasn't predicated on me training absolutely everyone I enrolled. I learned for the first time how to take the spotlight off of me and simply outsource. So all I had to do was focus on one simple, productive, money-making task each day, dot, 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 recruiting. (laughs) This knowledge helped me enroll 500 reps into my business within the following 12 months. In fact, the next year we earned $211,000. We became the number one income earners of our company in record time. Meanwhile, our 500 reps turned into 40,000. Following our example, many of those individuals also became top income earners. If this was possible for us, can this be a reality for you too? Stay tuned. In blogs to come, I will share the keys that took us from losing everything to earning more than $500,000 within 24 months. But most importantly, I will show you how you can duplicate this system and make it work for you too. God bless you and your business. So what I got from this was this individual was working endlessly to live a lifestyle above their means, this person and his spouse. And within that, they did go bankrupt and kind of lose everything. But he ended up learning that all he needed to do was recruit people. And that, by just focusing on recruiting people, that following year, he signed up 500 people and made over $211,000. Those 500 people became 40,000 people. And that's what got him to where he is today and where his spouse is today. So I feel like that's really important because that just goes to show that the bulk of what he's about to talk about is focused on recruit. So that goes to show where this person's mindset is when it comes to how they train people. It goes to show where all of their money is coming from and how they were able to get to the top of an MLM. And that is based on recruitment and recruitment only. So let's see what this person has to say. It is a 14 minute training. So we're going to be here a minute. I have a lot that I want to talk about. All right. This is going to be a fun video because in today's video, I want to share with you how you can get paid more in savvy than working with other businesses. Because there's one thing that my wife and I have learned after 25 years of making a full-time income in this industry and being a full-time coach and a consultant is we don't want to waste our time. We want to make sure that we get paid for efforts and I think you do too. And I'm going to share with you, I'm going to break down specifically why you can get paid more here with Savvy than other companies. All right, so let's break this down right now. All right, so the first thing is to understand is you get paid on what's called the commissionable value. In every product, there's a value attached to the product. With Savvy, the thing that makes it different, and I can be done with just this one statement, Um, Savvy is growing two to five times faster than I see most products or companies growing. And I'm going to share with you why. Here's number one. It's new and it's different concept in the marketplace. So it's way more received. I mean, I want you to hear, I want you to, I want to repeat that. It's new and it's a different concept. So people are extraordinarily more receptive. In fact, what we're noticing is minimum two times more receptive when you invite them to up to five, and we believe even up to 10 times. But I wanna be even conservative on this. Just imagine if your customers or your potential business partners are twice as more receptive because this is such a new concept, athletic leisure, lifestyle, luxury clothing. 
let's just say that people are two times more receptive than a wellness or nutritional, let's just say two times, okay? That means that your time for effort is two times less, okay? Okay, so the next point is um, our three-step system has been the most proven, simple, duplicatable process for you to earn money in a very leveraged time because we know something that's for sure. Most people that join Savvy or other businesses like this, they're busy. They're, they, they have very limited time, so they need to make their time work. Because of the three-step system that you're actually in right now, the Facebook group, the ATM system that you're in right now is part of that process. In fact, you get to see the community. 20,000 people have joined over the last six months. He first said that Savvy is growing two to five times faster than most companies, that it's new, it's different. I am curious where they got those numbers. Like, how are you getting the numbers that it's two to five times faster? Did you do a study? What did you do to figure out that it's two to five times faster? Now, I do understand that this person does have experience, like 25 years hopping into different MLM companies. You are going to build up kind of like true understanding of what it is that goes on in different type of MLMs. These individuals, him and his spouse, have actually been in like wellness MLMs before, but I didn't find what MLMs they were actually in. But in general, they have have been in like previous MLMs to where I can see they may have like personal knowledge on, oh, well, our business is growing faster here, but it wasn't growing that fast there. But how do we actually know that that's true? <laughs> and then he said, it's new and different. In my opinion, it's not new. If you guys aren't familiar with Savvy, I have done a deep dive on them and I've actually gone over a recruitment like Zoom call from them before. So I will link those both down below if you want to watch it. But Savvy is literally an athleisure wear company or a workout clothing company. That's it. That's not a new concept. Now, MLMs are also not a new concept. MLMs are known. They've been, Lord, they have been here for way too long, in my opinion. And like I said, workout clothes and athleisure wear are not new. Now, what I will say is there isn't a ton of MLMs with athleisure wear. We do have MLMs where they are like selling clothing. And then I believe we have like Zaya. I would kind of say LuLaRoe because they were selling leggings. But I don't know if you guys are putting that with like workout gear. But I will say that, yes, Savvy itself is one of like, like the only athleisure wear companies in MLMs, but it's not a new concept altogether. You can buy workout clothes at Walmart. You can buy workout clothes at Target, TJ Maxx. Like you don't even have to go to an actual athleisure brand to buy clothing. And then on top of that, the fact that you could buy workout clothes from so many other places just shows that you don't need an MLM to be able to buy that clothing. It's not something that's new. So I, I don't know. I feel like he was trying to say it's this new concept, but it's not. MLMs have been around forever. And then on top of that, workout clothing has too. Then he's talking about their three-step system, their ATM system. So I did a little bit of research on the ATM system. So I'm going to tell you guys what that is. So the ATM method stands for add, tag, and message. So first, you will normally add people into a private and hidden Facebook group. Next, you'll tag them in a post or a video where you want them to see kind of like an announcement. So for example, maybe he will have this in a Facebook group or people, and I think he has this call actually in a private Facebook group. And he has this call in that group where he can find people on social media. He can get them into like this hidden group so he can add them. Then he can tag them in this video to learn more. And then after that, he can message them to see what they liked about the video. So on Google, when I was actually like researching this, it says that the goal for this method is to attract people who are open to your product or opportunity and to create curiosity. So I feel like this is the method he's talking about where it's like, oh, I didn't have to, like in that article I just read where he's like, oh, I've learned. I don't have to spend all of my time teaching each individual person. He can just recruit hundreds of people, make a Facebook group where he can add one training and he can just tag a bunch of people in it. So that's what he's really talking about when it comes to that ATM method. But I don't feel like that's a, a new method. I feel like people do that all of the time. Like it's a very, very very common method used in MLM, so it's nothing new. My wife started off with 13 people, and because of this ATM and this three-step system that you're going through right now, it turned into thousands. Those thousands, just last month in the month of May 2020, um, was over $650,000 of volume, which actually calculates to 1.5 million in sales from those 
13 people. So is the duplication work? Does the system work? It's extremely proven when you get trained, when you follow the process, okay? Okay, we need to break that down. He said he started off, like him and his wife start, or well, actually he said his wife. His wife started off with 13 people. Those 13 people turned into thousands of people. And then the thousands of people turned into $650,000 in volume, meaning like $1.5 million in sales. But then he ends a sentence with like, oh, we made 1.5 million in sales from those 13. It's like, no, you didn't. The volume didn't just come from those 13 people and those 13 people only because you did just say that the 13 people your wife recruited turned into thousands, which that's how you made that $650,000 in volume. And that volume is never just gonna come from 13 people. Like those 13 people are gonna have to be selling so like literally hundreds of thousands of dollars of products in order to make that $1.5 million in sales. So that volume is actually coming from all of the people in the downline, like those thousands, AKA those 13 people your wife recruited, all the people they recruited, and the people they recruited and the people they recruited and so on. That's how you got that. And in my opinion, not only is this like customer sales, it's probably the products that the actual reps are buying. So this person everywhere I have seen him promotes that people when they get started need to buy the $1,000 savvy package, $1,000. So can you imagine thousands of people starting savvy, spending $1,000 on a package, and then every month after that to stay active, spending over $50 just to stay active, that is going to turn into a lot of product sales at the end of the day because your people are buying products. Like those thousands of people in your downline are buying products, which is how you get that volume. So I actually did a lot of numbers and I wanted to go over it with you guys. So hopefully you enjoy this part, but based on their comp plan in Savvy, to sign up, they normally, again, like I said, sell packages from $250 to 1,000. So that means after your recruit sign up with a package from $250, $50 to $1,000, each person is required based on the comp plan to either buy $50 worth of product a month, which they don't even have products that are just 50 bucks. So you're gonna end up spending more than that, or you can sell that to customers. So if you don't sell it to customers though, you are gonna have to buy that like product yourself monthly. So I want us to imagine a thousand people, cause he said thousands, but we're just gonna make the numbers easy. Let's take a thousand people. If a thousand people signed up with the lowest package, that's $250, $250, you're already at $250,000 of packages sold just from a thousand people. And he said that they have thousands of people under them. Now, after that, next month, when they have to go active again, all of those thousand people are going to have to stay active with that $50 or more. But to make it easy, I'm just gonna say 50 bucks. What if they all spend $50, which like I said, they're already gonna spend more than that because the products are more than that. But if they all spend $50 on products to stay active, that's already 50 grand, 50 grand in sales. So imagine how quickly this adds up when it comes to top reps like this. Imagine literally thousands of people in a downline signing up with starter kits and then buying products every single month, how much that volume is going to accumulate for the upline. So in my opinion, I doubt that most of that actually comes from products sold to customers, but most of it's going to come from that downline, like all of those people signing up with those starter kits. And then after that, all of those people buying products every month. So if we even wanna go further than that, when we look at their income disclosure statement, let's do the numbers here. Year, they say that 53% of people made an average of $552, 17% of people made an average of $1,341, 15% on average made $3,302, and 7% on average made $7,000. So that is the average annualized, so what people are earning in a year. So already we're seeing that 53% of people literally only made $552. So if they're signing up with this $1,000 package, you're already in the negative. And then each rank above that is only 8% of reps. So you have to go and climb at least four ranks. And then that fifth rank, only 8% of people end up in the top couple ranks that they have. So how many of those reps are actually profiting after they sign up? And that's something I always ask because if this person is promoting that his rep should sign up with the $1,000 package, and then every month after that, they're spending $50 on products every single month or over 50 with shipping and how much these products actually cost not including trips that they may go on, office supplies, online systems, etc. How many people are actually profiting in this MLM after they're doing all of that? 
I just wanted to break all of that down because I feel like he's trying to make it sound really good. Like, ooh, look how much money you can make. And you can make thousands of dollars here and there. And he's going to keep going on how much money people can make going all the way up to $250,000 bonuses. But he's not talking about one, the percentage of people that actually get there, which is a very small percent. And two, the amount of money you're actually spending and talking about what you're profiting in a year versus just what you're making on these extra bonuses that only the top 8% of people are even going to get access to. So here's the next point of why we get paid more than most company. It's a natural shopping frenzy. It's organic, meaning in most companies, they gotta, you gotta get people to buy their $100 product per month, or if you gotta pretty much educate them and sell them on the fact that they gotta be on an auto ship for 50 or 100 bucks. It's like part of the requirements, which is not a big deal, but usually people only spend what they have to with most other businesses out there. Here, because it is so tangible and women and some men love to shop every single every single week people are shopping like crazy so every time we do a new release every time we do a new fashion show on fridays it's like christmas time or black friday i think my wife said it's like black friday every single week and that's why the volume has gotten just crazy um and not just for my wife not just for my wife and i um, but we're seeing people win like never before. And again, it's because they're making money. It's because they're getting sales. It's because the receptivity is wild and huge. It's because the duplication is so natural and simple and it's the way that it should work. All right, the next point of why our compensation is paying so well. We have a proven leaders here that know how to train you. My wife and I have been doing this for 25 years. We know how to take people who hate to sell, never done this before, never had success before, and show you how to walk you through a process to succeed. So that's another reason why the income is so powerful here in the growth. But look, many other companies have great training. Many other companies have some of the same features. But let me just talk about a few other companies because again, I consult for a living. I do this for a living. I've been training for 10 years every day. I get to go into other companies, wellness companies, travel companies, skin, all different type of companies. He decided to say that people are spending. How many people are actually spending that much? Because in a second, we're gonna look at how much these products are just to get one item. And I already showed you guys the stats for the income disclosure statement. So when he said, we're seeing so many people that are actually winning here and that's why it's different. It's like, who's really winning? Cause off the bat, 53% of people are making a median annualized income of $293 and an average of 552. Oh wait, no. I forgot that. I actually forgot something from my deep dive. So when we're actually looking at the income disclosure statement, if you look at the top rank, it says senior executive and above. So there's actually five ranks in one column that they're not talking about. So when it says senior executive and above, they actually have director, advanced director, senior director, and diamond director above that rank. But on their income disclosure statement, it doesn't show it. It just shows that 1% of people are in the senior executive and above rank. So 1% of people are getting to the top five ranks. And how many people are like T and K where the past 25 years, they actually, you know, ended up getting their cars repossessed and all of that stuff. How many people is that going to happen to? How many people are going to end up in that exact situation that they used to be in before they got to recruit 40,000 people? And then he said, we've been doing this for 25 years, trainings, etc. He did admit that, and I appreciated that. He's like, there's trainings everywhere, which is true. I've talked about this a lot more recently, but trainings are everywhere in MLMs. It's not really that big of a promotion thing. Oh, yay, you are you got good trainings. Okay, everywhere has trainings and none of them are good in my opinion. So when he says we've been doing this for 25 years, I feel like, yeah, they have. But also in the article I read, they literally proved that recruiting is how to get there. So that going to be me assuming that that's what they're teaching. I'm assuming that that's what they're teaching to people, that people just need to recruit and it's not going to really be product-based unless you're talking about the products that the recruits are buying. And I will tell you this, Okay, many companies, you know, their nutritional product, whatever their nutritional widget is, or their pill, or their lotion, or their potion, or their skincare, or their CBD, or whatever it is, their travel product, they're fine. Usually have up to a 12. Now, I want you to think about that. Think of a 12 time markup on an inexpensive, usually these products cost the companies, let's say, two bucks. Like literally two bucks. I know because I consult, I actually own two network marketing companies like this in the wellness space. Two, two dollars, sometimes five dollars if they're really good products, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less in some cases. Now I want you to understand that. 
because most companies have a 10 to 12 times markup. So can they mathematically pay more? Absolutely. Okay. So some of you are saying, well, my other company in the, in this company paid this, but savvy, you know, it doesn't have the same commissionable value as, you know, some of the wellness companies. But the thing that you got to understand here that makes it so unique is there's very little competition with athletic clothing. There's very little in the CBD and all the other different wellness companies. And there's some good companies out there and not all companies or products are created equal. But what I will tell you is there's hundreds of CBD companies. There are hundreds of skincare, maybe thousands. There's hundreds, if not thousands of travel companies. And, and again, CBD companies, wellness companies, skincare, in all different industries, in every single niche, there are so many competitors out there. And again, you want to feel, when you hit that pillow at night, you want to feel good knowing that we have a tangible product that's not marked up, right? It's very competitive compared to other athletic leisure companies. So with that said, again, the apples to apples may be a little bit different, but all that you get paid on is the volume. And I want you to think about this. Okay. He is making a point with the fact of the competition thing, because when we think about it, if we looked at all MLMs and we broke them down into columns of like their niches, right? Like he said, or he said niche. I don't know the right way to say that. I always say niche. <laughs> but if you were to categorize them and be like, okay, wellness, makeup, clothing, athleisure, where like if you broke it down like that, you would see that there is not a lot of MLM athleisure wear companies. So I totally agree with that. But at the same time, there are so many athleisure companies in the world that people can buy from that are cheaper and could be better quality than what it is that they're selling. So I kind of get the argument on one end, but the other half of me is like, eh, there is competition though. There's competition in athleisure wear in general. He also said that other companies have huge markups and that's what makes it unique about them because they have very little competition. I personally have to disagree with the argument about the huge markup because I feel like Savvy is expensive. And that's my personal opinion. So this is just something that people may agree with me on. I would love for you guys to comment down below if you agree with me on this and I'm gonna show you how much their products are. This is just my actual opinion about how much athleisure wear costs. So if we look on their website and you just look right off the bat, what first comes up, we see that a Sherpa, like a full zip Sherpa costs $98. Their trench coat costs $118. Full zip least hoodie costs $108. Their performance jacket is $98. A couple of their other jackets are $88. And then if we go down to looking at leggings, their leggings range from $58 to $90. So some are on the higher range, some are on the lower end of $58. And then they also have bras from between like $50 and $68. So there are some that are $50, there are some that are $68, and then some in between. And then the cheapest thing that I could find were their crop tops. They had like two or three crop tops that I seen and they were $38, but any of their other shirts or long sleeves were on the higher end of like 58 bucks. So in general, just to get a jacket, you're probably gonna spend about $100. Just to get a pair of leggings, you're gonna spend 60 to 90, not including shipping. For some bras, you're gonna spend 50 to 68 just on one. And then for a tank or crop top, just for one of them, you're gonna spend 38 bucks to 58. Now, again, in my opinion, I feel like that's extremely overpriced. I just wouldn't spend that much on like a t-shirt. <laughs> I wouldn't spend $38. Like I do have Nike and stuff like that, but I get all of that stuff on big sales. Like I, whenever I get Nike stuff, either my mom sends me Nike stuff or I go and get Nike, but I always get it at a discount, military discount, or when it's on sale itself. I also have bought recently, I bought a trench coat that I used in New York. I'll pop up some photos here. I bought that for $60 at like an H&M. And you could ask my friend Isabella, I went to uh, New York with her. I was so warm the whole trip. Like I, it didn't matter if it was 30 degrees that day in New York. I was so warm because of that trench coat. So my trench coat was $60 comparable to like their $118 trench coat. So I just feel like there are a lot of places where you can find stuff cheaper. I know bras are a little bit more selective because some women who need a lot of support are going to need bras that are a little bit more pricey, but I still feel like $68. It's a lot of money. And then leggings, 58 to 90. I guess if you want to compare it to like Lululemon, they are comparable in price. But Lululemon to me is just top tier quality. So I don't know how Savvy competes with that, like how good their quality actually is. So again, I have to disagree. I think their prices are extremely overpriced, but let me know what you guys think. Compared to other companies, if our if our company or if, if, if other companies pay you more, but you get a lot less sales, where do you make more money? 
you get paid more when you have volume. And the volume that you and I are seeing here, the commissionable volume, right? Even though it mathematically might be a little bit different than wellness type companies that have a 12 times markup, we do not have a 12 times markup on these athletic clothes. I could tell you that right now because it just costs more for good clothes, for high quality clothes that people are gonna wear. So if your company or other nutritional or wellness companies pay more, but you do less sales, do you get paid more? Look, I've been doing this for 25 years. We don't wanna waste our time. If we knew that we can make more money in a cheap wellness or weight loss product that, that can mark up the product and everybody's making money more like a money game, we would do it, right? If we really thought we had the, the integrity behind it, which a lot of times they're not, if we really knew that we can make more money in other companies, we would do it. I got respect for him here because I agree. A lot of these like fitness companies got zero integrity. I actually agree with that. I think a lot of the fitness MLMs prices are so uber expensive for no flipping reason. So yeah, I do agree with him on that. That was funny. But we like Savvy because it's a natural, authentic, organic sales process and people just buy whether they're making money or not. People order, your customers order whether they wanna make money or not. In fact, even on the business packages for business partners, they're buying those business packages because the value in those product packages, and that's why most people are coming in at $999 because they get 1100 bucks of authentic, amazing, high quality, not ridiculously marked up, good, athletic leisure clothing and much more to come. Okay. okay, so here is where, I know before I said it, but here is where you said that most people are coming in with that thousand dollar package. So just a minute ago when I was literally going through all of the numbers on their comp plan, I went by that low number, right? Where I was like, oh, if a thousand people signed up with the lowest package of $250, they would be making $250,000 in sales they're saying most people are joining with the thousand dollar one so you could only imagine how much volume they're earning off people's products packs itself that's why i'm saying most of their volume is going to come from people in their downline all of those people who are buying all of those products starting and then all of the people who are buying it every single month or every week like he said that's a lot of people in your downline that are buying products that are giving you that volume then he said people buy whether they want to make money or not and then he decided to add oh well also the customer buy even if they want to sell or not i don't really have a comment on that what do you guys and sorry i hit my mic there what do you guys think about that and then my question my follow-up question to that is are the reps the customers yes yes they are i answer my own question okay so that's the big difference savvy products are authentic and you can feel proud about that and that's why people are sharing it cold market warm market people on social media people out and about everywhere people are sharing it like I've never seen people share before so again um, and I want to share this just gonna break down I'm not gonna break down the compensation but I want you guys to understand something just with the upfront bonuses alone because the volumes growing so fast you can make a thousand to five thousand to ten thousand to twenty five thousand even a fifty thousand even a hundred thousand dollar one-time bonus even a two hundred thousand dollar bonus and some of you are thinking Oh my gosh, how am I ever gonna make all those one-time bonuses? Do you understand that's $391,000 of, of, of pure income? And that is one. That's one way we get paid with SAP, one. And I'm gonna tell you right now, you know, most companies, it takes you years to start to hit those bigger bonuses. My wife done it within six months. She's already really close. Next month, if she when she requalifies, She's going to make the $50,000 bonus. We are projected for the month or the month after to hit the $100,000 bonus. And then shortly after, and many people like Chris, Amy, Courtney, Lisa, Amber, uh, Amber, and so many other leaders, Molly, Dunn, Matt, Matt, um, Matt, Moore, so many different leaders are hitting these bonuses like wildfire. Why? Because it's authentic. The community is amazing. The system's working. The training is world-class. The quality of the people that are coming together are getting more amazing people just like you, okay? But here's what I'm gonna tell you. We have, we're gonna, with a new compensation, we're gonna pay up to seven levels with seven generations. And all you have to understand about that is it pays really deep, really big. We have company pools. We have monthly producer pools for customers and builders. We have enroller pools. So basically what that means, all you have to know is these two things. It's very good money upfront and it's extremely good money, long-term solid residual income. 
And I know I'm speaking a lot and I'm putting a lot of information out to you, but I want you to just take one big pause and I want you to meditate. I want you to think about, I want you to write this word down, residual or two words. How about income? Residual income. When you have a, a taste of it, when it becomes part of you, when you see it hitting your bank account every month, residually, my 20 year old baby girl who's building savvy is making over a thousand average right now, minimum in savvy. And it's only going to grow. She's brand new at this thing. That's residual base based on her volume and her customers and her team. It's the most fun way to make money I've ever seen in 25 years. Oh, he's recruited his daughter. I wonder if they like help her and like put people under her. I wonder if she does does it alone. Anyways, he also said you can make money with like this one time bonus. And he really emphasized this bonus that like you can make 50,000, 100,000, and that 200,000. The only bonus where I could actually see those numbers on their comp plan is their rank advancement bonus. Again, rank advancements, ranking up in MLMs are incentivized, and we always see that in their comp plans. So their rank advancement bonus is actually awarded when a rep holds a rank for two consecutive months. So he talked about a $50,000 bonus. I'm going to assume that the $50,000 bonus is when a rep hits advanced director and in order to hit advanced director, it is the third highest rank. Again, only 1% of people are in the top five ranks. So barely any people are ever going to hit these ranks here. You need 12 partners that are active. So active brand reps. You need a minimum monthly team QV of 500,000. So that volume he keeps talking about, you need 500,000. And then 30% of that volume comes per leg that you have. So he's saying that she needs to re like qualify and she's going to get that $50,000 one and his wife's on track to hitting that $100,000 one. And then if I go to their terms and details, they say this is a one-time bonus paid for achieving and holding a new eligible rank for two consecutive months. So I don't know if they get that payment in full. Some MLMs do it a little bit differently where you get that payment over a course of a couple months. But yes, if his wife does hit that advanced director rank and she holds it for two consecutive months, she will get that $50,000 bonus. And then again, to go to the next rank, she just needs a little bit more like not a little bit actually it goes from 500,000 volume needed to 1 million um, volume needed so it's again the odds the income disclosure statement showing the percentage of people that actually hit those ranks it's very slim to hit that now I want to share this just about influencers I'm going to touch on those influencers out there um, this is pays way more than influencer so if you're going after an influencer, don't try to teach them how to do influencer marketing. Teach them how the power of compounding and residual income is. It's a superior way to get paid than influencer money. And my daughters are influ big influencers on social media. And the influencer money that they can make is good six figures, but it's not compounding. It's not residual. It's not perpetual. And it's not community-based. It's just transactional. And you got to keep reselling and reselling. And of course, if you're the Kardashians, you can make some pretty big money, millions, millions of dollars if you're an influencer. You don't need to be a Kardashian to make a living on social media. I'm not even gonna say more about this. I have done countless videos about influencing. I also found a training of him and his wife talking about influencers and they were trying to recruit people from 18 to 24. If you guys want me to do a video on that, I can also react to that call and I can go more in depth on this. But like I said, I've done many videos on influencer marketing and how it's smarter than multi-level marketing. I've done both. I've done multi-level marketing. I have done content creation, influencer marketing. I've done both of those. And the average average person in MLM doesn't profit versus influencers and content creators do. I will also say that I did find all of his daughters on TikTok. One, they're beautiful. But on top of that, they have such good platforms. Like I love what they do. They do lifestyle on their TikToks. One has like a million followers. One has like 700,000. That's a lot of followers. And you can get literally thousands of dollars for brand deals. He said that his daughters can make six figures. Why would you want them in the MLM? Like the fact that he recruited his 20 year old daughter it's like she and the other ones have such good social media followings that that could be a real like serious business for them why have them join an MLM? So I don't know. I feel like I really hope that his daughters do stick with the influencer marketing and stick with like TikTok and Instagram and stuff like that because they really, based on what I've seen, have been really successful with it and they look great. Like they're doing really great things. So I'm wishing them all of the best and I really do hope that they stick with that. Now, listen, I'm gonna share something with you as I'm wrapping up. It, I'm an expert when it comes to compensations, but even me, 
it takes me some time to understand the mathematical equations of the dynamics of exactly how every single component of a compensation works. Look, it's put together by brainiacs. It's put together by CFO, CMO, engineer kind of people that sit there and tinker with it for months on end, right? And I this is exactly what I talk about. This is why I break down comp plans. I am trying to find a better way to do it in the sense of like how to make graphs for you guys and stuff like that in 2022 for my visual people who don't like to just hear me talk about the numbers but want to see physically like visuals. So hopefully I'll be able to do some of that in this video. If not though, I get what he's saying. These comp plans are made to be difficult. They are made in my opinion. This is just my opinion. I don't have a fact to back this up. I feel like these comp plans are made to be confusing. They're made so that people can't just easily Google it and figure out out that the odds are against them. Again, just my opinion. <laughs> I feel like the odds are against them. All MLM comp plans are made to be complicated. And that's why sometimes on deep dives, it can take me a full day or hours to figure out a comp plan and to understand it enough to talk to you guys about it. And that just goes to show that the average Joe that's signing up for this MLM is never going to understand the comp plan or it's going to take them a long time to understand it. And I feel like that's really messed up. But again, I think MLMs do this on purpose so people can't look at a comp plan and understand it enough to see what they're actually getting into. And with that said, what that means for you is by the time that you try or think you want to understand exactly how savvy, let alone any compensation or industry works, by the time you try to understand it, someone else is going to join Savvy, plug into our three-step system, and get months ahead of you in income, compounding, residual income. And I'm, I'm telling you because I care about you. I'm telling you if you're the right partner for us. Don't overthink this dang thing. Don't sit there and say, well, this company pays that and this company pays two. Companies get paid when they're in momentum. Companies get paid when you have authentic customers. Companies get paid with community. Companies get paid with leadership. Companies get paid with a great infrastructure for corporate. And we have it. Look, everybody says they're in momentum. We have proof that our company is in momentum. And all I can tell you is if you're not in yet, get back with the person, get in. Get started, don't mess around if you can with the lower packages, if you can, if it's appropriate for your family, step up into the all-in pack and come in for the $999 pack because I'm telling you, it will. you're coming in one time with your business. The way that people make the most money is going all in. And a better way to come, go all in is to come in at the top package. And, and again, if there's any way to do it, we have people selling things to come into it. Uh, just because we know the value of this. Look, we are not just a great company. We're a team of people that are purpose-driven. We know how to help you. We can show you how to win, but you gotta do your part. And if you really wanna get paid here, you gotta plug into the system and let the system work for you, okay? And the cool thing about it is you don't have to explain the comp plan. And hopefully, people don't need to know everything about it. Just tag them in this video. Let my 25 years of experience do a lot of the explaining for you so you don't have to. All right, welcome to the team, and we look forward to seeing you hit all those bonuses for you, your family, and your goals, and your dreams. I wanna thank you so much for being a part of our team. I didn't even write that in my notes because I script these videos, but he literally just said, oh, hopefully even when you're in, you could just tag someone in this to explain the comp plan. This call did not explain the comp plan, in my opinion, at all. It just talked about, it, it just did income claims. Like you can make this and you can make that. It, it didn't actually break down the comp plan. I've done a deep dive on this MLM. I've broken down the comp plan. I can break it down. I know their comp plan now. <laughs> I can break it down pretty well. And he did not break it down at all. He did not go over, okay, what are the stats on it? How do you stay active? How do you actually get the volume? He didn't talk about the max monthly QV per leg. He didn't talk about the actual bonuses itself and how you get it. He didn't say that you need to hit certain ranks for a consecutive of two months to get that rank advancement, but like he didn't talk about that. So I'm very confused. And it shows me that even people in his own downline aren't even gonna understand the comp plan. They're just gonna tag people in that. And that goes to show that in MLMs, people don't always fully know everything and they don't take the time time to because they're trained by people who tell them to just tag them in a training. And this training didn't even explain the comp plan to a, to anybody. He also said that the amount of time it takes for someone to understand the MLM, the comp plan, whatever, others are going to be way ahead of you. Don't overthink it. Please overthink it. If you are debating on going into Savvy and you are watching this right now, 
please overthink. Please understand. Because he said, you don't need to understand. The amount of time it takes to understand other people are going to be ahead of you, meaning he's saying to just jump in. But please don't do that. Please understand what you're doing before jumping into this MLM. Because take it from me, I was in an MLM for two years based on their stupid income disclosure statement. I was in the top 1% or 2% or something like that. And I literally didn't profit anything. And I jumped in. Like that was me. I was that person who didn't overthink it. Well, I kind of did. It took me four months to finally say yes, but I didn't even Google it. I didn't look it up. I didn't truly understand what I was joining. I didn't do any of that when I was in the MLM. I didn't question things. I just pretty much listened to my upline. Like I was that person and joining an MLM was one of the worst things I've, I've literally done in my life. Knowing that I have recruited people, knowing that I've sold products when I shouldn't, knowing what I know now about MLMs and looking back on my experience, that's definitely one of my bigger mistakes I've made. And I've been able to learn from that mistake and use what I have learned in that mistake to now hopefully help people. And I'm just telling you, please understand and overthink before joining something like this. Concluding thoughts. All in all, I feel based on listening to this, I have also listened to other calls that these people have hosted, him and his spouse. Normally, it's not just him, it's both of them, um, but this one was just him. He's probably just better at talking about the money aspect of it versus her. But in general, watching this, watching other calls of theirs, actually finding that whole article on prioritynetworker.com about him literally saying that in order for him to build a widely successful business, that he ended up doing one simple productive money making task each day and recruit and then by that he ended up signing up 500 reps made that $211,000 and then after that 500 reps turned into 40,000 so in my opinion I feel like that's probably the basis of what he's teaching when it comes down to what he's probably teaching people and how he's going about things how people are getting their volume in his downline and stuff like that makes me assume that most of them are recruiting that that's the basis of what they're doing that's why when I even go on their like YouTube channel most most of it's why you should join Savvy and people are just talking about their experience. It's calls like this. It's not really, hey, let's just talk about the product. Let's just talk about how good our product is. So it really makes me assume that this couple and every, I don't even know if this is the MLM where they have 40,000 people in. This could be an MLM after that where they, you know, quit the MLM they were in, took a bunch of people and then built their time in Savvy or built a downline in Savvy. So kind of having like a built in downline from their previous MLMs. So I'm not sure if they have like 40,000 people in Savvy or whether that was a previous MLM. I think it was a previous one, but in general, if they've hopped from MLM to MLM with that many people, have gotten into Savvy, they've recruited a lot of people to get to the level that they are. So yeah, that's the general consensus is a bunch of like income claims and then the fact that they probably really rely on the recruitment aspect and then their recruits recruiting and so on. So yeah, let me know what you guys thought about this video. Definitely make sure to leave a like and comment what you thought about this video. I would love to know. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I upload every Monday and Friday and I will see you guys in the next video. Something happened in 2003, motherfucker. I cannot talk today. We're incredibly profitable with up to six and seven figure. Oh my God. With up to six and seven figure incomes. And then on top of that, they're so, I will link those, no, no, motherfucker. Mm.